phones are sensitive, so you want to get right up on it if you can. Yeah. And John lived out there and used to walk around barefoot, man. There wasn't much out there. I graduated from Leander High School forever ago. <laughs> All right, 735 is the time. We'll get back to some more of the Jerry Jones uh, birthday wishes. He is 68 today. For his birthday, he gets to look across the parking lot and watch the Texas Rangers come home victorious. Then look down at the division standings and see his team at the bottom of the NFC East. Happy birthday, Jerry. Good luck with those Vikings. 7.35 is the time of Ma Brooks, John Madani, Ellie Price. This is your wake-up call on the Longhorn Station AM 1300 The Zone. We're going to take a slight detour because we've got a very special guest in studio. Well, actually, two. I don't want to slight Josh. I mean, he's, he's a special guest because he brings us stuff. But the Texas Stars are going to open the home season this weekend. They've got a game Saturday. You guys play Sunday, too, right? Yep. So Saturday and Sunday as we turn on all the microphones around the house. Cedar Park Center, Saturday night, 7 o'clock against the San Antonio Rampage. Joining us is the voice of the Texas Stars, Josh Fisher, and left winger, Luke Gazdick, who is also in studio. Luke, good morning. Good morning, boys. How you doing? Well, we're doing just fine. Fantastic. Uh, got to get you right up on that microphone. There we go. There you go. Kind of early for you, or are you pretty much an early riser? No, this is all right. This is all right? <laughs> too bad. I couldn't help but notice you don't have coffee. Now, now your, your running mate here, Josh, he's got the 32-ounce uh, coffee. Uh, um, you're not a coffee guy? I mean... He went there. I guess he just didn't want to pick me on. <laughs> oh, see, that's what it is. He dumps yeah. it all on me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Luke hails from Toronto. Yeah. So obviously you can play hockey. Why do Americans think anybody from Canada can play hockey? Is that just a big misconception? Or do you just, does everybody grow up with a stick in their hands and skates on their feet? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I think uh, I could probably skate before I walked uh, in the backyard. Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, in the backyard, uh, we used to freeze it down. And you have a, a rink in your backyard. So by the time I was, my older brother's two years older than me. So by the time I was three, he was five. We were probably out there every night, and it's just a staple of how you. It's just growing up in in the north. I mean, but that's about all you can do, right? I mean, what else can you do on? on yeah, uh, some frozen ice. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but the winters get cold, so you got to find something to do. So that's that's what I turn to. Now you're a big old boy, man. Six three, according to this, two hundred and twenty eight pounds. And I'm noticing here, I'm going through your career you know, since you were drafted in two thousand and seven, of course, by the Stars in the, in the sixth round. Your penalty minutes, uh, you topped them last year, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you had uh, twenty one fights um, a year ago. So you're the kind of guy that kind of enforces things that happen out there on the ice, huh? Correct. Yeah, I, I like to mix it up a little bit. Right? You got a big smile when you say yeah. that. Is that is that? I mean, help me out here. How do you smile when you talk about fighting? Because clearly, man, you're a terror on the ice. Uh, it, it's fun. It, it's uh, it's something I kind of grew into uh, a couple of years ago, and and I, and I like the role. I like uh, I like the the role I play on the ice, and and I'm smiling because it, it's fun. I like to do it. Are you the bad boy? No, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> You're a nice guy. <laughs> well, let me ask you this: when you when um, I mean, when you think about fighting, because you run the risk of being injured. Clearly, I mean, you don't want to jeopardize that. But at the same time, I mean, and now it, trust me, I'm a novice to the game. And last year, uh, really, the Texas Stars really introduced me to it. I went out to several games, had a blast out there at Cedar Park Center, and I encourage anybody who has not gone and actually seen an actual hockey match in in person. It, it is the it's action packed. Uh, and, and I was a little disappointed because in the, the semifinals, I didn't see as many fights as I wanted to. Next time, man, I'm going to have to send you a text, man, to tell you I'm in the stands, man, and let me see one. Yeah, seriously, I'll give you my number after. <laughs> <laughs> but I think as you go along, like that was in the playoffs, you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, when you get in the playoffs, then, I mean, that kind of gets pushed aside, and it, it's pretty much just all business. It's all hockey. So you'll have one if it's really, really heat of the moment, but you won't see uh, a lot of those sort of things as a part of you get along. Do you remember your first fight as as a as a as a hockey player? I mean, when did it take place? Because I know there's there's a lot been made about when it's acceptable to allow young men or younger players to be able to express their frustration and do what is a natural part of the game, which is fight. Um, when was when was your first fight, and, and and how do you feel about younger players actually uh, using that as a part of their game? I think I was about 16. I was playing uh, junior hockey, which is what you play before you turn pro. I was about yeah 16, and I don't think I had a clue what the heck I was doing. But um, it, I don't know. You know, it. I wish kids uh, growing up. It, it's not, it's part of the game, and I think they're Absolutely. trying to take it out of the game a little bit. But it's always going to be a part of the game. Uh, I was never really for the kind of stage fighting where 
two guys say, okay, you Drop and me are going to yeah. fight. Uh, so I think when kids are growing up, if a fight's going to happen, it should really be in the heat of the battle and in the heat of the moment. And if it happens, that's good. And I think it, around 16, 17 is when you'll start to see kids fighting, which isn't a bad thing, because like I said, it's always going to be part of the game. It's not a bad thing? Fighting's <laughs> not a bad thing? <laughs> no, I don't think so. we got a lot of kids that listen now, Luke. Come on, yeah, dude. I mean, here and there, I think it's good for your team. It's good for the morale. Yeah. Uh, fans love it, and, and it, can, it, can, it can turn a game around, to, to tell you the Absolutely. truth. Absolutely. If, uh, if, if we're down 2 nothing and, and something happens and, and a guy gets in a fight, it'll really boost up the morale of everybody, and I've seen it turn around games. What's the number one swear word uttered? It? No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Left winger Luke Gassy is our guest at the Texas Stars. They open the home season this weekend, actually, Saturday night, taking on the San Antonio Rampage. Now, Josh, you guys just beat them already, right? Didn't you open you open the season on the road this weekend? Yeah, they played Sunday uh, afternoon. That was the first game of the year, and they did very, very well. A 3 nothing shutout. Brent Cron picked up right where he left off. Uh, you know, we were talking before we came out of that break. A lot of changes for the team. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, about 12 guys returning from last year's Western Conference championship team. That's about half the roster. Right? Yeah. Okay. But you know what, though? At this level, I think you're going to get that kind of turnover. And, I mean, we were also talking, I mean, you make a trip all the way to the finals. You know, other teams are going to take notice of your players. And, you know, we had some guys that got some good paydays because of it. You know, Warren Peters was signed by Minnesota, and he's likely going to be in Houston. You know, Andrew Hutchinson. Dan Jansevsky, Garrett Stafford, they were all part of that great defense that we had last year. You know, Jansevsky got signed by Philadelphia. Uh, Hutchinson got signed by Pittsburgh. And then Stafford, along with Matt Climey and Matthew Baudouin, all signed with Phoenix. And now they're in San Antonio. So we already saw Climey, Stafford, and uh, Mr. Baudouin. We saw them on Sunday. But the team looked very good defensively. The you know system was right in place. You know, We've got two 19-year-olds on the team, uh, a couple 20 years. We have eight players, including the one left of me. Uh, age 22 or younger, which is crazy to believe, but I mean, it's a big youth movement. How about that? We, uh, that's Josh Fisher, the play-by-play -play voice of the Texas Stars. What's interesting to me now, because we were in the, in the building, in the last game that was played last year, the Calder Cup uh, Finals, you know, it was, the, the, the tension was amazing, because of course it went to extra time, and then it was just, it was so sudden. You know, you went from, these guys are going to do it, to, that's it? <laughs> you know, they're not going to play in this building again. I it's mean, like a very fast deflating balloon. <laughs> it, it, it was. The air came out quickly. But but let me tell you something. The uh, how many ever fans that Cedar Park Center holds? I mean, they were. Nobody went to get a beer or a soda or a dog. Everybody stayed in their seats. It was amazing. Uh, the the level of excitement for playoff hockey, the Calder Cup Finals. It was. I don't know. It was it was amazing. But now here's what I'm reminded by. When the Round Rock Express first started up. 10, 11 years ago, something like that. And we had guys, we saw guys like Roy Oswalt, Brad Lidge, Morgan Ensberg. Uh, e e yeah, I know. Some good players exactly. there. <laughs> yeah. know. Keith Ginter, to a lesser extent, he didn't uh, stay with the team, but he got a cup of coffee in the bigs. I mean, they had a lot of success early. And then the expectations were way up here. Now, you guys are Western Conference champions. Now what? Now what do you got, Josh? Uh, no more lying like a snake in the grass. I mean, no. we're going we're gonna to be on everybody's radar, and Absolutely. I mean, that's basically just all there is to it. I mean, they, I think they kind of expect it. Uh, you know, it's pre, you know, preseason heading into the season. Everybody's good, so you don't really know what you have until you start seeing some other teams. But uh, I, I think that we are very good. I think that uh, honestly, we're better than what I expected to see on Sunday. We played a lot better than what I expected to see. Very good team. Josh Fisher and Luke Gastic are our guests from the Texas Stars. We've got to take a short break here. Can we keep you for one more segment? Absolutely. And uh, when we come back, we get to know Luke a little bit more. Indeed. And, and also, um, if you want to get in the house on Saturday, we got a pair of tickets for you. We'll be giving them away for you right now. 13th caller will receive uh, a pair of tickets to see the Texas Stars take on the San Antonio Rampage. That game is, uh, of course, Saturday, 7 p.m. Uh, 13th caller, be kind to Ellie. Just like that, voila, you get tickets. Mm -hmm. You're in the house. If you're not nice when Ellie answers the phone, you won't win. We'll beat you up. Trust you, say. As a matter of fact, we'll let Luke beat you up. We'll go to the experts. 7.44 the time. We're coming back. AM 1300 the zone.